Hi dear all, welcome you all to the brilliant group of institution. A warm good evening all of you. Dear all, here we are discussing the organic chemistry, all the four important chapters, haloalkanes, haloarene, alcohol, phenols, ether, aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acid and amines. All together we are going to discuss within two hours. I am not wasting your time. Dear all, directly we can enter into the topics. Hope you completed your chemistry uh, the English examination very well and next exam is next target is our chemistry examination definitely we have to score a good marks let's cover entire part in the organic chemistry I hope you already studied the concept anyway the area which all you have to make we have to be focused more and which all area you have to be concentrate and distinction test reactions everything we can discuss very fast and I hope you uh, keep observation and attention in the class dear all so i am starting dear all these are our four organic chapters you know haloalkanes haloarene that's carry six mark among this all four organic chapter aldehydes ketones and carboxylic acid that's the only one bring around eight marks remaining all are six marks they're all at any cost we have to score a good mark all of you please collect because it's full organic chemistry it's fully organic chemistry so you have to be uh, you have to concentrate and you have to remember many kind of reactions you know even distinction test conversion questions and all finally after completing all the chapter revision i will give you some set of questions to complete the reaction i'm expecting a good answer from each one of you so dear all hope you all are ready i'm starting with halo alkanes and halo arene chapter first are you ready dear all are you ready are you ready because you just completed your english exam today so we are directly entering into the organic chemistry hope you remember all those reactions yes or no are you ready dear all shall we start shall we start so i'm not wasting time dear all let's discuss so fast within two hour all the four organic chapter let's do the maximum all right yes so dear all our chapter is halo alkanes and halo arenes dear all in which you can expect these type of question first question which all iupac nomenclature and definitely you know sn1 and sn2 mechanism mostly they will ask you the reactivity order you know tertiary secondary primary part and chiral carbon they will give you two compound and they will ask you which is chiral which is chiral or acid asymmetric carbon and which is optically active such a kind of question and what are enantiomers and diastereomers definition we can expect dear all what are allylic position and benzylic position then reasoning questions many are there we can discuss maximum and solubility and boiling point they will ask you solubility and boiling point dear all but any of the organic chapter okay then polyhalogen compound dear all last year it's a deleted portion this year we can expect a very important question from polyhalogen compounds dear all named reactions which all we can discuss and conversion questions will be there and distinction test these are the main points you have to be concentrate on which one halo alkanes and halo are dear all those who are in online no need to write anything now don't no need to copy all these things you will get in the youtube channel but now you keep observe and keep study the reaction within two hours we have to discuss all the reaction we have to bring all the reactions in your mind all right so dear all i'm going to discuss each one of you iupac name some of the example and what kind of question you can expect that i'm going to discuss here so dear all this type of questions you have practiced that is the first part in our IUPAC nomenclature in our NCRT syllabus. Whenever you get line bond line representation please make to the normal form in order to avoid the mistakes. For example dear all I am starting from the CH3. So dear all the first compound is CH3 then CH then all right, these all are carbons right. CH3, CH double bond, CH single bond, CH on which one more CH3 and one BR. This is the normal form of the first compound. Let me tell you what is the normal form of the second compound here all. These are the carbons here. Let me place what is the first carbon? CH2. All right. That is CH2 double bond C. On the first car second carbon there is one more CH3 and then another one CH on which one CH3 and then one BR. This is the, in order to avoid the mistake, dear all, please make the bond line form into the normal form, all right? Now, in this compound, what is the name of the given compound, dear all? Dear all, 
Keep in mind in haloalkanes and haloarene chapter, halogen and double bond, if there, please give preference for double bond. Double bond and halogen, if there, please give preference for double bond here all. So double bond should get least number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So dear all, let me start. That's having fourth position bromine. Hope you get the answer already. The answer is what? 4 bromo, total 5 carbon, pend and 2 in. That's a combo name, right? 4 bromo, pend, 2 in is the combo. What about this combo dear all? 1, 2, 3, 4 and methyl is there. Bromine is there. Alphabetical order, bromine first. So what's the answer? 3 bromo, then 2 methyl, right? 3 bromo, 2 methyl, total 4 carbon, but and first position, there is an alkene, right? 3 bromo, 2 methyl, but 1 in, that's a combo. So, such a kind of nomenclature we can expect. What is the answer for this question, dear all? Please observe this question, dear all. In this question, from where we can start number, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Well, you can put uh, 5 here, we can make it 5 this one. So, this is a methyl group is there, chlorine is there. So, which one? What is the name of this compound here all? 5 chloro, 5 chloro and we can place 4 methyl and total how many carbon? 5 carbon, where is the alkene? First position alkene, right? 5 chloro, 4 methyl, pen the 1 in. Is it correct or not here all? Is it correct or not? Yes, already you given the correct answer. All of you keep trying, keep trying, okay, keep trying. Is it correct or not? The last one. 5 chloro, 4 methyl, pend 1 in. Is it correct or not? Are you agree with that? Are you agree with that? So double bond and halogen, if there, please give preference for double bond, all of you, okay? Double bond having highest priority. So dear all, nomenclature uh, B4 methyl. Why did you name chloro before methyl? Because alphabetical order, alphabetical order, chloro, methyl, alphabetical order we should follow, right? Chlorine first, chlorine first, okay, right? So alphabetical order, all, first question, dear all, IUPAC nomenclature, please practice it properly. Next one, SN1 and SN2 mechanism, you know very well, let me tell you, dear all, please listen. SN1 mechanism, you know, two steps are there. First step, the slow step, were halogen removing formation of carbocation. Second step, what is what? Second step, the nucleophile is attacking. Nucleophile can attack through left or right, right? It will give you, there is a product, there is a nucleophile attack is happening. And in the last step, in the second step, you are getting a retention or inversion of configuration. Tell me fast, dear all. In SN1 mechanism, there is a retention or inversion of configuration. Retention or inversion in SN1 mechanism. In SN1 mechanism, retention or inversion. Fast, 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 fast. Retention or inversion of configuration is happening in SN1 mechanism, dear all. Yes, that we are getting a racemic mixture. Very good. We are getting a racemic mixture during SN1 mechanism. But my question, whether retention or inversion. Absolutely correct. Retention of configuration. That is a correct one. Retention of configuration is happening when one more point all of you one more point SN1 mechanism favor in polar protic solvent because that will stabilize the carbocation keep in mind all of you SN1 mechanism favor in polar protic solvent like water water alcohol etc so aqueous medium alcohol medium normally if they given mostly you have to follow SN1 mechanism they will ask you solvolysis hydrolysis aqueous in this medium you have to prefer SN1 mechanism, keep in mind all of you. And SN2 mechanism favor in which one? Polar aprotic solvent, right? Polar aprotic solvent like acetone, DMF, like that. Remember acetone, okay? So SN1 mechanism favor in polar protic solvent, SN2 mechanism favor in polar aprotic solvent. Now, SN2 mechanism, you know, it is based on the steric hindrance. Least the steric hindrance, more reactivity. You know, SN1 reactivity order, majority what we studied, tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary because SN1 mechanism, we are checking the stability of carbocation. Whereas in SN2 mechanism, we are favoring or we are checking the steric hindrance. The least steric hindrance is more reactive. So which is the reactivity? Primary greater than, secondary greater than, tertiary is the order. Let's go to some of the questions, dear all. Keep listen. Keep
keep listen question number one in increasing order of reactivity towards the ash displacement there are first question sn1 mechanism which will undergo SN1 mechanism faster? Dear all, let me number A, this is B and this is C. Can you tell me, dear all, which is highly reactive toward SN1 mechanism? Among A, B, C, which carbocation is more stable? If they are asking you SN1 mechanism, first remove the halogen, dear all. First remove the halogen. Remove the halogen, make a carbocation. Remove the halogen, make a carbocation. Remove the halogen, make a carbocation. Dear all, it's a primary carbocation, it's a secondary carbocation, and it's a tertiary carbocation. You know which is more stable? Yes, which one? Tertiary, right? So the order of the reactivity is what? toward SN1 mechanism, tertiary greater than, secondary greater than, primary. And one more thing, it is wrong now actually. Why? Because they are asking increasing order. If they ask increasing order, it should be from left to uh, lesser to greater. It should be dear all. So which way you have to write dear all? It should be this order, right? Where the tertiary is more stable. So we can say C, B, A. This is the reactivity order of what? This SN1 mechanism. What about SN2 mechanism? SN2 mechanism, we are checking which one? The SN2 mechanism, we are checking the steric hindrance, right? Lesser the steric hindrance, more action. So where is less steric hindrance? Absolutely the first one. So A, B, C. This is the order of which one? SN2 mechanism. Let me go to question number two, dear all. Come on fast, all of you. Among these two compound, among these two compound, dear all, tell me which one undergo SN2 reaction faster. Come on, all of you. Among these two compounds, among these two compounds, which will undergo SN2 reaction faster, whether A or B, or first or second? <coughs> first or second? <coughs> come on, first, come on, first. First or second will undergo SN2 reaction faster, dear all. SN2 reaction depends on uh, the steric hindrance. You know, this chlorine connected carbon, it is directly connected to two carbon, therefore, it is secondary. And this chlorine connected carbon, it is directly connected to only one carbon. Therefore, it is primary. SN2 mechanism, which will undergo reaction faster, primary undergo reaction faster. So, the second one. Dear all, whenever you answering, please draw the structure and, and write, this will undergo SN2 reaction faster because it's have least steric hindrance. Please give the reason also. Please give the reason also. Maximum, try to expand your answer. Maximum try to expand your answer dear all. Okay. So let me go for next question. Tell me dear all which alkyl halide from the following undergo faster SN2 reaction. Again SN2 reaction whether A or B. Come on all of you. Whether A or B which will undergo SN2 reaction faster. SN2, SN2, SN2 reaction faster. Which one? Which one? A or B? A or B? Dear all, SN2. This is primary haloalkane. This is secondary haloalkane. Yes, primary will undergo reaction faster. So, the first one will undergo the reaction. There is no doubt, right? A will undergo the reaction faster. Okay, done. Now, of the two bromo derivative, let me draw the structure all of you. That's given C6H5. What is C6H5? Phenyl ring and with one CH on which one CH3 and we have one BR. This is the first combo. Let me draw the second structure also dear all C6H5 C6H5 CH one more benzene ring or one more phenyl ring and we have one more bromine dear all which will undergo let me remember this is A this is B which will undergo SN which one which one which one which will more reactive toward SN1 reaction come on all of you which one which one among these two compound, among these two compound A and B, which will undergo SN1 reaction faster. SN1 reaction, if they are asking you, please remove the halogen first. Remove the halogen, make the carbocation. Remove the halogen, make the carbocation. Which carbocation is this? It is actually secondary because it is connected to two carbon. It is secondary. And this carbon is also what? Secondary. But dear all, the second one contain two phenyl ring. The second one contain two phenyl ring. 
so more resonance is possible right more resonance is stabilization is possible so here but here it's only one st uh, stabilization is possible so which will undergo sn2 reaction faster absolutely the b compound can undergo more reaction keep in mind all of you sn1 reaction stability of carbocation is the factor sn2 reaction steric hindrance is the factor keep in mind hope you clear sn1 sn2 reaction definitely we can expect a question from this area let me go for the next question dear all chiral compound identify the chiral molecule in the following pair or they will ask you among these two which is optically active you know the main condition to be optically active what it should contain at least a chiral carbon and the mirror image should be non superimposable right so whether which one contain a chiral carbon or which one is optically active tell me dear all whether a or b a or b which is uh, having a chiral carbon which one having a chiral carbon i think not no doubt right option first one or the compound first one dear all this carbon is optically active or this compound is optically active because the carbon is chiral so because this carbon connected to you can see it's an isopropyl group it's a methyl group it's oh and it's having one hydrogen also all are different group therefore it is called what chiral carbon or asymmetric carbon chiral carbon or asymmetric carbon it's optically can be optically active whereas this oh group you can able to see on this carbon both left and right both are same group it do not it do not contain which one a chiral carbon so it's not optically active it's optically inactive and what about enantiomers and diastereomer keep in mind all of you enantiomers are mirror images they are mirror images but non superimposable enantiomers are mirror images but non superimposable whereas diastereomers are not mirror images and non superimposable keep in mind all of you enantiomers are mirror images but non superimposable whereas diastereomers are not mirror images they are neither mirror images nor superimposable please remember the example all of you means the definition please remember that definition all of you and allylic and benzylic positions are important you know what is allylic and benzylic even vinylic also let us discuss dear all what is vinylic group what is vinylic group vinylic group means generally ch2 double bond ch for example vinyl chloride vinyl chloride what is allyl group dear all what is allyl group one vinyl group one vinyl group with one more carbon with one more carbon is called allyl chloride and what do you mean by benzyl what do you mean by benzyl benzyl mean benzene with say carbon this is called benzyl chloride dear all in this case how you can detect whether it is allylic vinylic and benzylic that is due to their hybridization dear all here the chlorine connected carbon is sp2 and this also sp2 if the halogen connected carbon sp2 sp2 then what we call this carbon vinylic carbon or vinyl group whereas the halogen connected carbon is sp3 sp2 sp2 then we can call it as what allyl group sp3 sp2 sp2 and what about a benzyl group halogen this is what sp3 and on which there is a phenyl ring that is called what a benzyl group so dear all in the first compound can you able to see this first compound this first compound whether it is allylic or vinyl group whether it is allylic or vinyl group <laughs> allylic or vinyl group you can able to see this is the halogen connected carbon it is sp3 this is what sp2 this is also what sp2 see the pattern sp3 sp2 sp2 therefore it is what allyl this is what allylic one which is allylic carbon which is allylic carbon the halogen connected carbon is called allylic carbon it is sp3 hybridized whereas what about this case dear all halogen connected carbon sp2 this is also sp2 this is a vinylic group vinylic group right where vinylic carbon is what sp2 hybridized so where halogen attached to carbon that's a allylic carbon in allyl group halogen attached to carbon in vinyl that's called the vinylic carbon in vinylic group so dear all uh it's okay no problem no problem try it okay try it try it try it this is the last try but remember it's the last try 
don't make mistake concentrate okay just uh, forget about other uh, things and all just uh, focus on this today now in this two hour we are in organic chemistry please remember so dear all so answer is ready this is allylic and this is vinylic next one reasoning question all we can expect dear all from the chapter i will read question one by one just remember the answers okay question number one out of ortho and para di dibromobenzene which one has higher melting point and why you know you know that this is dear all ortho chloro ortho dichlorobenzene this is what meta dichlorobenzene and this is what para dichlorobenzene among these two compound if you consider ortho this is ortho this is meta and this is para among ortho meta para they can ask you three orders we already discussed in mcq session one is their dipole moment they're all the dipole moment order will be ortho meta para and boiling point order is what they're all boiling point order and melting point order that's also important melting point order para ortho meta and boiling point ortho para meta dear all the question mark maximum the question you can expect here that's a reasoning question why para dichlorobenzene having highest melting point you know it is because of their high symmetry para dichlorobenzene having higher symmetry that's not enough okay because of high symmetry they occupy in the crystal lattice what tightly or properly so because of high symmetry of para dichlorobenzene they can occupy in the crystals will freely and with a tight packed so it will be rigid and it become what high melting point so high symmetry they can occupy in the crystal tightly they're all so that's the main reason for why uh, para having highest melting point they're all second question what is the second question why is the solubility of halo alkanes in water is very low dear all you know halo alkanes are actually polar water is also polar why it is not soluble you know halo alkanes do not Halo alkanes do not have an ability to form hydrogen bond with the water, right? Halo alkanes do not have an ability to form hydrogen bond with the water. Therefore, they are insoluble in water. Third question, allyl chloride is hydrolyzed more readily than normal propyl chloride. What is allyl chloride here all? What is allyl chloride here all? This is allyl chloride and what is normal propyl chloride? This is normal propyl chloride why allyl chloride undergo hydrolysis faster why allyl chloride undergo hydrolysis faster simple reason hydrolysis i told you hydrolysis occurs something if they given that means which reaction sn1 reaction in sn1 reaction what is the first step remove the halogen make the carbocation remove the halogen make the carbocation because process is hydrolysis aqueous solvolysis hydrolysis if they given that type of terms you can go with sn1 mechanism mostly so dear all allyl carbocation is there and uh, a normal hydrocarbon a alkyl carbocation is there which is more stable allyl due to resonance right here resonance is possible so allyl is more stable so he will undergo reaction faster please dear all if they ask questions with some uh, names like here allyl chloride or uh, propyl chloride something please draw the structure please draw the structure and explain well instead of writing so many terms please draw the structure and explain detail okay now question number four dear all let's go to question number four all of you keep observe Question number four, why is it necessary to avoid even a traces of moisture during the use of Grignard reagent? You know very well, what is Grignard reagent dear all? R, M, G, X, or M, G plus, R minus. If you are treating with the water, water contain the ion H plus and OH minus. What happened here all? This R minus combined with H, you will get a alkane, alkane. So if you want to keep the Grignard reagent as it is, the moisture should not be there because it immediately react with the water, it will give you hydrocarbon alkane. Keep in mind all of you, please explain with the reaction. Next one, question number five, how do polar solvents help in the first step in the SN1 mechanism? We already discussed SN1 mechanism favor. SN1 mechanism favor in which solvent? Polar protic solvent. 
because what is the point I told you dear all what is the first step in SN1 mechanism halogen remove carbocation form dear all this formed carbocation is stabilized by polar protic solvent what is the point in first step the question is simple why in SN1 mechanism we are using polar protic solvent because first step in SN1 mechanism formation of what formation of what carbocation right this carbocation is stabilized by the polar protic solvent therefore they are using polar protic solvent okay question number six aryl halides are extremely less reactive towards nucleophilic substitution it's a repeated repeated question dear all aryl halide let me take one example that is uh, benz uh, chlorobenzene it is less reactive than which one haloalkene you know for example ch3 cl they're all if nucleophile want to substitute if nucleophile want to substitute first of all we have to remove the chlorine but you know from haloarene the removal of halogen is difficult why it is difficult you know two reason one reason due to resonance it make a partial double bond one reason is what you know there is a partial double bond between carbon and halogen you know double bond is a little stronger bond is it it's difficult to break second reason second reason you know the halogen connected carbon is sp2 hybridized it's having around 33.3 percentage of s character you know as the s character increases the electronegativity of the carbon increases it hold the halogen little tightly so removal of halogen is difficult from haloarene that is due to two reason one is due to the resonance partial double bond one is due to the high s character more electronegativity both of the reason try to explain during examination dear all that's very important next one dear all question number seven two bromobutane two bromobutane yes i think already the answers are uh, given so faster than yes when we when I am discussing sixth question I think we are getting uh, seventh question very fast two bromobutane is optically active but one bromobutane is optically inactive what is the condition to be optically active dear all first main condition it should contain a chiral carbon please draw the structure of two bromobutane you can see there will be a chiral carbon therefore they are optically active whereas in one bromobutane there is no chiral carbon so optically inactive now what is eighth question dear all racemic mixture is optically inactive you know they will give you the question same way why plus or minus two butane all is uh, optically inactive you know plus minus plus indicate dextro minus indicate levo so plus minus indicate it's a racemic mixture it contain 50 percentage dextro 50 percentage levo all together it is optically inactive what is dextro it will rotate the plane polarized light towards right if it is levo it will rotate the plane polarized light towards left so 50 percentage dextro 50 percentage levo means what they cancel each other it's optically inactive so it's a racemic mixture racemic mixtures contain 50 percentage dextro and 50 percentage levo they are optically inactive dear one. they will cancel their optical rotations each other now ninth question although chlorine is an electron withdrawing group yet it is an ortho para directing in electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction and why dear all you know chlorine is a special case on benzene right chlorine is a special case on benzene all of you remember you know chlorine actually it's an electron withdrawing group it's having a minus i effect and it can act as a donating group also due to resonance that is called what plus r effect right so chlorine on benzene have two effect minus i and plus r but dear all because of the plus r effect because of the plus r effect it gives negative charges or electron richness electron richness on which all position ortho and para when you're drawing the resonance structure of chlorobenzene you can able to see their ortho and para positions are electron rich right so if they are electron rich definitely electrophile can attack there because electrophile is carrying or it's coming with what positive charges so dear all normally halogens are normally halogens are electron withdrawing group but on benzene ring it shows plus r effect also when it draw when you drawing the resonance structure of chlorobenzene due to resonance it's ortho and para positions get electron richness so electron richness mean electrophile can easily attack because electrophile is coming with a positive charge they are electron deficient they prefer to attack electron rich sites hope you clear that points 
manigold who is that why does the dipole moment of uh, ortho more it's very clear ortho dear all ortho dichloro benzene is this one just to draw the dipole moment diagram dear all chlorine is more electron withdrawing here chlorine is electron withdrawing here see there is a result 10 there is a result 10 so it having high dipole moment why what about para what about para? One chlorine upward, one chlorine downward. What happened? The dipole moment cancel each other. The dipole moment is zero. That's it. Okay, dear all. Uh, okay, then for all right. Next we are we are going to discuss about the next one, dear all, the distinction test. What is the main distinction test that we can observe in this area? Dear all, silver nitrate test. Remember all of you, AgNO3, AgNO3 test. Let's say distinguishing test in this chapter. Remember, here is a question. How will you distinguish between benzyl chloride? What is benzyl chloride? Benzene with the CH2Cl. And next one is what? Chlorobenzene, that is Cl. Dear all, how you can distinguish between benzyl chloride and chlorobenzene? Dear all, benzyl chloride when you treat with AgNO3 and chlorobenzene when you treat it with AgNO3, only one which can give AgCl. Which one? They're all this Ag, this Cl, it will give you AgCl as a white color precipitate. But this compound do not give. Why, dear all? Because the silver is ready, but chlorine we can't remove. This chlorine removal, we already said it is difficult from benzene ring due to the partial double bond. So, dear all, a benzyl chloride and chlorobenzene. You can, or generally alkyl halides and haloarenes, you can distinguish with the AgNO3 test. When you treat a halo alkane with AgNO3, it will give you white colored silver nitrate, and whereas Ag, this uh, chlorobenzene do not give this reaction. Okay? Okay? This is the one. No, no, no. It's a distinguishing test. They're asking distinguishing test. So, this is the test we have to be follow. All right. So, now, next one. Dear all, please remember in halo alkanes and halo arene. So, IUPAC nomenclature that's all over. Tell me what are the naming reaction we studied in halo alkane chapter. Fingelstein reaction, right? What is Fingelstein reaction? Fingelstein reaction. A halo alkane when treated with sodium iodide in dry acetone medium, you will get NAX eliminate, you will get RI, iodine exchange. What is Swartz reaction? A halo alkane when treated with AGF, you know AGX eliminate, you will get RF. The halogen is replaced by fluorine. Now, Sandmeyer reaction is there, Gutterman reaction is there. Fittig, Woods and Woods Fittig reaction. What is Woods reaction dear all? It is to combine to alkyl halides. What is Fittig reaction? It is to combine to aryl halides to get biphenyl. What is Woods Fittig reaction? One halo alkane with one halo irene. For example, methyl chloride with chlorobenzene. You will get toluene. Like that mixing. So these are the naming reaction in this chapter dear all. Fingelstein, Swartz, Fittig, Woods and Woods Fittig reaction, Sandmeyer reaction, Gutterman reaction. These are all the important from. Explain phenol from cumin reaction. Absolutely, we can discuss. Okay. So, dear all, come to the second chapter alcohol, phenols, and ethers. Very important, dear all. IUPAC nomenclature. Please, all of you, study this mechanism. Even in the classes also we discuss there are three mechanisms mostly alkene to alcohol reverse alcohol to alkene and alcohol to ether any one of the mechanism we can expect as a question you know step one protonation step two nucleophilic attack step three deprotonation that three mechanism so they're all alkene to alcohol alcohol to alkene and uh, alcohol to ether any one of the mechanism we can expect mostly they will ask you the questions like maybe direct question explain the mechanism for alkene to alcohol or they will ask you uh, write the mechanism for the conversion of ethanol to ethene or ethene to ethanol or uh, ethanol to diethyl ether like that with some example so please study the mechanism all of you important one acidity is a most expecting question from alcohol and carboxylic acid part you can expect acidity question i mean chapter we can expect a basicity question now the commercially two important alcohols are the methanol and ethanol their preparation you can expect as a question and reasoning question solubility boiling point question named reaction that ether bond breaking we can discuss and distinction test these are the main area you have to cover in which chapter alcohol phenols and ether so dear all let me start with the questions 
what is the IUPAC name of the compound those who are ready those who are ready those who are keen observing the class please give me the answer before before we enter into the question dear all what is the answer of this question the answer of the question you can type in the chat box dear all don't waste time so dear all alcohol is the major group alcohol is the major group so alcohol connected alcohol including a longest chain please take it so one two three four this is what dear all this is phenyl ring this is phenyl ring this is what branch dear all methyl ring right methyl sorry methyl branch so dear all methyl and phenyl which is alphabetical order first right lmnop m first M first, which is number two. Yeah, methyl is on second position. So the name is what? Two methyl, two methyl, and uh, four phenyl, four phenyl, but, but. Where is the alkene? They are all third position. Three N and two O. Is or no? Once again, all of you. Two methyl, four phenyl, but, three N two O. Hope it's clear. Correct, dear all. Two methyl, four phenyl, but three and two all. Careful, uh, Fadi. Just remember, please don't write E N E. Okay? Please don't write E N E. Just stop E N. If E N E, E N E, or Y N E, if it is coming in the middle, please stop with the E N or Y N. If it is ending, if it is ending, or if it is a main group, then we can end with the Y N E or E N E. Okay? So that's the one. Very careful, all of you. It is a chance to cut marks. Have you okay? Clear? Correct one. Hope you clear, dear all. Let's go to the second question, dear all. It's an ether. How to name an ether? You know very well. You know very well. It's an ether, dear all. How to make this name, dear all? Left side one carbon, right side four carbon. So definitely your parent chain is on the right side. So parent chain, let me take it as this is the biggest chain, dear all. Propane. Where there are two branches you can observe, dear all. One is methyl, right? What is this branch name, dear all? Methyl. And what is this branch, dear all? Methyl with oxy, what we call methoxy. Methyl is there, methoxy is there. Which will you write alphabetical order first? Methoxy. Meth, meth is common, right? Next is O, here Y, which is alphabetical first. O. So, dear all, number 1, number 2, number 3. Both of the brands should get least number. Therefore, I start numbering from left side. So, dear all, let's go for the name, name, name. Name is what? 1 methoxy, 1 methoxy, 2 methyl, 1 methoxy, 2 methyl, propane that is the IUPAC name of the compound they're all anyone given the correct answer one methoxy yeah yeah yes yes one methoxy two methyl propane two methyl propane remember all of you methoxy first okay alphabetical order methoxy first then methyl then methyl yes correct right Okay, good. Keep going, all of you. Nomenclature, please practice for phenol, alcohol systems. Also, okay. And you know some common names. Catechol, rasolcinol, hydroquinol, etc. Right? Orthocrasol, metacrasol, paracrasol. Those terms, remember all of you. What is orthocrasol? What is orthocrasol? OH and CH3. If it is CH3 here, metacrasol. If it is here, paracrasol. How they will ask you the question, dear all? What is the IUPAC name of this one? This crasol, catechol, resolcinol. These all are common name. Please study their IUPAC name, dear all. So we should know what is the common first of all. Okay. So please concentrate on those area. Even ether IUPAC name and nomenclature also. So, so, so important. Please uh, study all of you. Let's go for the question, dear all. Acidity question. They are all acidity. The questions let me tell you what they can ask maximum from acidity area. First question, why phenol? Why phenol is more acidic than any alcohol for example methanol? Why phenol is more acidic than methanol? Why dear all? When phenol lose this hydrogen, you are getting a more stable phenoxide ion. You know phenoxide ion is more stable due to resonance. So phenol is already ready to lose the hydrogen. But what about methanol? If it lose hydrogen, it is getting methoxide ion. It is not stable due to resonance. So phenol is more acidic than normal aliphatic alcohol. One another question here all. Phenol or carboxylic acid which is more stable? Carboxylic acid because those resonance structures are more stable than which one? Phenol. And main thing, what are the two factors affecting acidity? What are the two main factors affecting acidity? Which all dear all? Electron donating group and electron withdrawing group. Yes or no? No. Electron withdrawing group 
can increase the acidity increase the acidity whereas electron donating group they will decrease the acidity yes or no yes or no electron donating group decrease the acidity electron withdrawing group don't uh, increase the acidity hope you know which all are donating and withdrawing group yes or no yes or no what's that phenoxide ion is resonance stabilized yes yes correct 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 they all why electron withdrawing group why electron withdrawing group increase acidity if there is an electron withdrawing group in the ring they will take the electron from the chain and the oh bond get weaker you can easily remove the hydrogen faster you know which all are electron withdrawing group right nitro group acid group cyanide aldehyde ketone these are mostly withdrawing group which all are donating group alkyl group alkoxy methoxy ethoxy alkoxy group alcohol amine these all electron donating group let's go to the question dear all what are the compounds given here first question paracrasol what is paracrasol dear all this is phenol on which para position a methyl group this is called a paracrasol what about the second one para nitrophenol this is phenol and para position nitro group what about the last one that is simply phenol it's very simple dear all let us consider dear all this is a this is b this is c dear all it's having a electron donating group so it will decrease the acidity it's have nitro group electron withdrawing group that will increase the acidity and this is just a phenol among this one which is the most acidic one dear all b is more acidic because it contain electron withdrawing group then c because it do not contain donating group and the last one is a because it contain a electron donating group so please remember all of you what is the um for the why is carboxylate ionized resonance more stable when you drawing the resonance structure of when you drawing the resonance structure of the carboxylate ion you know you are getting negative charges negative charges on most electronegative element like oxygen what is the point here all when you my question i am repeating all of you why benzoic acid uh, is more acidic than phenol because when benzoic acid lose the hydrogen you will get this benzoate anion this this ion it is more it, it is it is also having resonance structure when phenol lose hydrogen you will get phenoxide ion which is more stable among this dear all this is the one more stable why when you drawing the resonance structure of phenol uh, carboxylate ion you are getting negative charges on oxygen whereas when you drawing the resonance structure of which one the phenol phenoxide ion you will get the negative charges on carbon so over negative charges on carbon because this oxygen is going to lose this hydrogen lose this electron right so oxygen automatically get positive charge so dear all in carboxylate anion you will get negative charges on oxygen in phenoxide ion negative charges on carbon which is more stable oxygen bring negative charge because oxygen is the most electronegative element than carbon he prefer negative charge that is the most stable structure therefore carboxylate ion is more stabilized clear all of you have this clear yes 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 iba that's a correct answer that's a correct answer hope you clear all of you hope you clear now the time is what now the time is 8:15 dear all let's go fast more questions are waiting commercially important alcohol dear all we can expect one of the preparation question from this one maybe they'll ask you write a commercial preparation of methanol or ethanol okay please remember all of you how to prepare methanol remember all of you methanol is also known as what wood spirit okay methanol is also called what wood spirit wood spirit okay methanol is prepared by the combination of carbon monoxide with two hydrogen let me treat with which one dear all z and o c r2 o3 and what is the temperature and the pressure hope you remember 200 to 380 m pressure can anyone say what is the temperature condition what is the temperature condition can you say what is the temperature condition dear all to prepare methanol in order to prepare methanol simple reaction carbon monoxide when treat with the two hydrogen with the condition zno and cr2 o3 at 200 to 380 m anyone can you say what is the temperature condition what is the temperature condition 
temperature condition which one which one temperature condition very good all of you it is around 573 kelvin to 673 kelvin is the temperature you can convert this one directly to methanol let me tell you dear all how to prepare ethanol ethanol is prepared from sucrose what is sucrose dear all c12 h22 o11 you know sucrose is a disaccharide when you dissolve in water it will give you glucose and fructose right c H12O6. What is the enzyme is helpful for this reaction? Come on, all of you. Which enzyme help to convert sucrose to glucose and fructose? Tell me. What is the name of the enzyme you have already studied in the chapter biomolecules? Right? Invertase. 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 Invertase is the enzyme to convert which one sucrose into glucose and fructose. Now, dear all. This glucose, what is glucose dear all? C6, H12, O6. This glucose, this glucose, when it is treated with one another enzyme, you will get ethanol and carbon dioxide. Dear all, ethanol you can prepare from sucrose. Sucrose first hydrolyze, you will get glucose. Glucose when treated with another enzyme, you will get uh, this ethanol. My question, what is the enzyme using in the second one? Very good, that is what? Zymase. What is the enzyme we are using, dear all? Zymase. Remember all of you, what is the purpose of invertase and zymase? We can expect a question even from biomolecule chapter also. So this is a commercial preparation. Please study all of you carefully. Next one. Reasoning question we can discuss, dear all. First one. Why bond angle in alcohol is slightly less than tetrahedral angle? Let me consider methanol. Methanol is CH3OH. Let me consider methane. Methane is tetrahedral in shape. So, dear all, you know, methanol, a, a normal alcohol, when you consider the oxygen carry two lone pair. Dear all, what is the normal tetrahedral bond angle? Come on, all of you. What is the normal tetrahedral bond angle? What is the normal tetrahedral bond angle? <coughs> is it? Is it asked in the sample paper? Yes, mostly it will be there. Therefore, I am saying there is a repeated pattern in chemistry, all of you. Please concentrate these points. Very good, 109, 109.5 degree or 109 degree, 28 minute. Okay, fine. Why this bond angle is shorter? Why in alcohol the bond angle is shorter? Because lone pair, lone pair repulsion. They are all this lone pair and lone pair repel more. So the bond come closer. So the bond angle lesser than normal tetrahedral bond angle. Keep in mind all of you. So the answer is lone pair, lone pair repulsion. Question number B. Why COH bond length in methanol? What is methanol? CH3OH. Is slightly more than COH bond length in phenol. Please, please, please all of you. If they ask this type of question, please draw the structure and explain. Please. Please draw the structure and explain, okay? Methanol, why the COH bond length is more than the COH bond length? That's a question. You know, here resonance is possible. During resonance, carbon and oxygen carry a partial double bond. You know, double bond is shorter and stronger, yes? So, explanation with the structure. Yes, exactly. We can explain with the help of double bond. Good. Next question C. Why phenol undergo electrophilic substitution more easily than benzene? Very simple answer, dear all. Very simple answer, dear all. Let me consider phenol. Let me consider benzene. Dear all. Electrophile is waiting. Electrophile is waiting with a positive charge. You know chlorination. During chlorination, Cl plus is coming. During you no know, nitration. During nitration, NO2 plus is coming. During sulfonation, alkylation, acylation. All are electrophilic substitution because they are coming with an electrophile with a positive charge. You know, phenol. OH is an electron donating group. Whatever the electron donating group on benzene ring, when you're drawing the resonance structure of that compound, you will get the ortho position and para position electron rich. We discuss in chlorobenzene also. So if there is an electron donating group on benzene, its ortho and para positions are electron rich due to resonance. So it activate. So this group, the OH group activate the benzene ring towards electrophilic substitution. It's giving electron richness on ortho and para. So electrophile can easily go there. 
whereas in benzene such an activating group is not there therefore it is less reactive hope you clear the answer here all it is based on electron donating group presence okay next one okay that's we can go ortho nitrophenol is more steam volatile than para nitrophenol a repeated question here all what is ortho nitrophenol this is ortho nitrophenol this is ortho nitrophenol and this is what you're all oh para nitrophenol para nitrophenol you know very well in ortho nitrophenol this oxygen and hydrogen having what indra what are you bonding dear all indra indra molecular hydrogen bond whereas para nitrophenol carry inder in their between so in ortho nitrophenol there is a intramolecular hydrogen bond within the molecule whereas in para nitrophenol there is a inter between two molecule which is stronger dear all tell me whether inter or intra which is more strongest bond can you say whether inter or intra which is the strongest bond come all of you which is strongest bond which is strongest bond intra or inter which is strongest bond inter inter is stronger Inter is stronger dear all inter if it is stronger it is very difficult to break the bond it won't undergo vaporization very good very good inter is stronger dear all because of inter is stronger it won't undergo when you steam what do you mean by steam water vapor when you apply steam it won't undergo vaporization because it's very difficult to break the bond so ortho nitrophenol undergo more steam volatile more steam when you apply steam it will undergo vaporization faster because it is weak bond explain with the structure again i'm repeating okay next one dear all tert-butyl chloride what is tert-butyl chloride let me draw the structure of the compound dear all tert-butyl what is tert-butyl yeah, tert what is tert-butyl this is the one tert-butyl chloride chloride on heating with the sodium methoxide what is sodium methoxide NaOCH3 sodium methoxide it giving you two methyl propene absolutely why 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 dear all it is not Williamson synthesis it is your halo alkane this is your sodium methoxide sodium methoxide we studied already if the sodium methoxide or sodium alkoxide part is a smaller group what is the point Na plus O right methoxy. If your sodium alkoxide part is a smaller group, it normally acts as a strong base. Strong base. So, dear all, in the presence of a strong base, our halo alkane do not undergo Williamson synthesis. Instead of that, it undergo beta elimination. What is beta elimination? Halogen go from alpha, hydrogen go from beta, make a double bond between them. Yes, we are getting alkene instead of which one? Ether synthesis. Keep in mind all of you, during Williamson synthesis, if your sodium alkoxide part is a smaller group, it can normally act as a strong base. Instead of Williamson synthesis, it will undergo elimination reaction, beta elimination. Very good, very good. And uh, last one, alcohols are more soluble in water than the hydrocarbon. You know very well, alcohols have a higher ability to form hydrogen bond with the water. Therefore, alcohols are more soluble. What is the, which way you are going to explain here all? Take an example, ethanol okay ethanol is ch3 ch2 oh let me consider some water molecules dear all h o h h o h and h o h water molecule you can able to see the oxygen hydrogen hydrogen oxygen oxygen hydrogen hydrogen receive alcohols have a higher ability to form hydrogen bond with the water therefore alcohols are highly soluble in water compared to the hydrocarbons so dear all most expected reasoning question some more is there so please remember all the reactions once again next one dear all let's go Named reactions, mainly three are there, you know, Coles reaction, reamer Tiemann reaction, Williamson synthesis. Dear all, let us discuss first, what is Coles reaction? Coles reaction, Coles reaction, treating phenol, treating phenol, and we will get which one? Treating phenol, we will get salicylic acid, right? We will get salicylic acid, dear all. Coles reaction is the conversion of phenol to salicylic acid. What we are treating first? First, we will treat with which one, dear all? NaOH, right? Aqueous NaOH. Second, we will treat it with which one? Carbon dioxide. There are two sets. Two sets are there, right? Let me tell you the complete reaction once again. To last revision, all of you. Last revision. So, starting with the word phenol. 
phenol first we treated with the word aqueous NaOH, you will get sodium phenoxide ONA. Yes or no? This sodium phenoxide first treat with the carbon dioxide, second treated with the acid, you will get which one? The OH and COOH that is called what? The salicylic acid. So phenol to salicylic acid what we call Kolb's reaction. What is riemer tiemann reaction dear all? riemer tiemann reaction starting is same phenol but product is salicyl aldehyde. Yes or no? Same here, we are treating with the aqueous NaOH, but one thing extra. What is that one thing extra? Chloroform, CHCl3. If you use chloroform, you will get here ONA and CHCl2, right? You will get an addict like this one. When it is first treated with which one? NaOH and secondly with the acid, you will get which one? Salicylic. We get just a clubbing, okay? OH and CHO. What is this? Salicylic acid. What is this? Salicyl aldehyde, right? Salicyl aldehyde. Yes, dear all. Last one, Williamson ether synthesis. Williamson ether synthesis means, let me consider a sodium alkoxide, for example, sodium tert. Okay, let me give you a simple reaction, dear all. RONA. What is this? Sodium alkoxide treating with a, a halo alkane with a dry ether. What happened? NAX eliminate you will get ROR so ROR is what ether so a halo alkane reacting with the sodium alkoxide getting a ether is called what Williamson ether synthesis dear all naming reaction is a direct question even some conversion questions also we can expect yes correct Hope you clear all. These are the uh, naming reactions. So most important, directly we can expect question. Explain the following with the example. So please study example also for this one. Now, dear all, ether bond breaking. My question is, dear all, when this is treated with HI, it's also treated with HI. It's also treated with HI. HI, H or HBR, okay, something. So H plus I minus. H plus I minus. H plus I minus. Dear all, you know what is the way of bond breaking in ether, that? This is the oxygen and left, right. This is the oxygen, left, right. This is the oxygen, left, right. Tell me, dear all. In the first question, whether the oxygen left bond or the right bond, which one you are going to break? Which one? Which one we are going to break, dear all, to make? Yes, Ruby, yes, yeah. We can explain with the uh, normal form also. Okay, don't worry. No problem. We... Right one or left one, dear all? Yes, absolutely, dear all. Dear all, left side, it's a primary group. Right side, also a primary group. In such cases, the less teric hindered position, you have to break. So let me break this part. Oxygen carry negative, carbon carry positive, then you just interchange. So dear all, H plus you should add this side, I minus you should add to this side. So what is the product dear all? You will get CH3, CH2, CH, CH3 and then CH2, OH plus uh, you will get CH3, CH2, I. So dear all, if left side primary, right side primary, secondary primary, if this type of group, if it is coming, please break the less steric hindered position. Okay. Now, let us go with the, uh, which one? The second question. In the second question, left or right, which one we can able to select or which one we are going to break? In second question, which one we are going to break? You can able to see it's a primary part, it's a tertiary part. Which one we can able to break? Primary is there, tertiary is there. Which part you are going to break there all? Careful, okay? Careful, 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 careful. Which part we can able to break it? The right one, the right one. If there is a tertiary group, if there is a tertiary group, dear all, please break that part. It follow normally SN1 mechanism. So carbon carry positive, oxygen carry negative and just interchange the ion. H plus come to the negative part, I minus go to the positive part. So you will get CH3, CH2, CH2, OH plus uh, CH3, CH2, C, CH3, CH3, I. Okay, can you tell me dear all in the last question where you are going to break faster? Come on in the last question whether left or right where we can able to break it faster break it faster Which one left or right left or right if it is it's an aromatic right dear all in aromatic type ether After the breaking you should get phenoxide ion 
after the breaking where I am breaking the left part. Yes, very good. If you break here, yes, dear all, you are getting a phenoxide ion and benzyl carbocation. Now you interchange it all, you will get benzene with uh, CH2I and uh, the benzene with benzene with that OH. So dear all, this is the way of bond breaking. It's very important. Please practice the NCRT. NCRT, the, the last part of the ether, you can able to see maximum expected questions already there in the textbook with answers. Please practice those area. Now dear all, what are the distinguishing tests in this chapter? Mainly there are two tests, Lucas test, neutral ferric chloride test. Let me add one more, that is iodoform test. These are the main three distinguishing tests in this chapter. Dear all, you know, Lucas test is to distinguish between primary, secondary, tertiary alcohols. Let me tell you, dear all, please remember. Tertiary alcohols will give you immediate turbidity. What is Lucas reagent? Concentrated HCl with n zinc chloride. Okay, and uh, what is the observation, dear all? Tertiary alcohol will give you immediate turbidity. Secondary alcohol will give you turbidity after 5 minutes. And primary alcohol will give you turbidity only by heat. That you know very well. And so they will ask you, how will you distinguish between propane 1 ol and propane 2 ol? One is primary alcohol, one is secondary alcohol, Lucas test. Now, neutral ferric chloride test, dear all, it is a particular test for phenol. Neutral ferric chloride test is given by phenol. So whenever you studying the distinguishing test study the test study the reagent who gives who won't give that you have to remember neutral ferric chloride test is given by phenol what is the reaction all of you phenol is what benzene with the OH when you treat it with a neutral ferric chloride FeCl3 all HCl eliminate you will get iron with you will get Fe with phenoxide ion Fe with phenoxide ion 6 times 3 minus. This is the compound you are going to get. It's having a violet or purple coloration. So this is the test given by which compound you all? Phenol will give you neutral ferric chloride test. Now next one, iodoform. You know iodoform is yellow in color. Iodoform test is given by alcohol which containing CH3, CH, OH group. If this group is there in the alcohol, it will give you yellow colored iodoform. So for example, propane 2 ol, propane 1 ol. How you can distinguish? We can use iodoform because propane 2 ol contain this group. So they're all alcohol chapter. There are two, sorry, three important uh, distinguishing tests, which all they're all Lucas test, neutral ferric chloride test, and third one, iodoform test. These are the main distinguishing tests in this chapter. They're all, are you clear up to this? Are you clear up to this? Are you clear up to this? Because I need a response from you. Because it's just like a, otherwise it should be just like a radio. I don't like that. Because if it is a proper answer, if it is giving, and if you can able to revise very well, because uh, you have time, three days are there, you can maximum revise everything. You can maximum revise everything. Industrial preparation of, you know, okay, okay, fake, uh, you asked me, right? Let us pre prepare from cumin. It's very simple preparation, dear all. Phenol for preparation, please study, okay? Phenol for preparation, which all, one is we studied from chlorobenzene to phenol, dose process, benzene to phenol with the oleum, etc. Third one, aniline to diazotization, then warm water. Fourth one, cumin, right? Cumin preparation is very important, dear all. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Yes, Arjun. There is an iodoform test in uh, aldehyde ketone chapter also. We are also discuss that reaction. Let me just clear this doubt here all. Please wait all of you. The cumin preparation. Okay. From cumin. From cumin, how to prepare uh, phenol? What is cumin? Cumin means benzene with a isopropyl group. Cumin means benzene with a isopropyl group. First, we will treat with oxygen. Please add this oxygen in between this carbon and hydrogen. So, you will get benzene with C. CH3, CH3, then OOH. It is called cumin hydroperoxide. Cumin hydroperoxide. That's on treated with H3O plus or acid hydrolysis. What is happened here all? Just uh, for remember, dear all, this just to remember this OH you please add on benzene. This OH please add on benzene. Only to remember, okay, you will get phenol. What is left in the system that you will get acetone? CH3. 
CO CH3. Dear all, you know that it is a commercially important preparation of phenol from cumin because you are getting acetone as a byproduct. It's also commercially important chemical. Okay, so this is one of the preparation, dear all. All right. Yes. Okay. Next one, dear all. We are entering into the part the most expected and most important chapter you know aldehydes ketones and carboxylic acid it's carry all eight marks okay eight marks iupac nomenclature the reactivity order of aldehydes and ketone towards nucleophilic addition reaction you know tell me dear all whether aldehyde or ketone which is more reactive towards uh, uh, which one uh, nucleophilic addition who is this? Uh, please write the detailed products of iodoform test with uh, alcohol. That reaction, see, the reaction when you treat it with uh, alcohol and uh, uh, ketone, mostly the reaction is not important in that one. That uh, iodo test is mainly important. Okay. Even aldehyde ketone, the most expected iodoform test, mostly you have to uh, expect on aldehyde ketone part. If you want, I will explain the reaction. It is not needed actually. Uh, the test is enough. Yes, they are all aldehydes, right? Aldehydes are more reactive towards nucleophilic addition. And next one, the acidity order of carboxylic acid is expecting one. Reason in question, order of boiling point, named reaction and distinguishing test. These are the main area you have to cover or you have to focus on which area they are all. Aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acid. Let's go for the naming all of you. Hope you can able to answer so fast. Tell me what is the answer of the first question. Yes, tell me. What is the answer of this question? Tell me, dear all. What is the answer of the first compound, the IUPAC nomenclature? Come on. What is the IUPAC nomenclature of the first compound? You can able to see, dear all, two functional groups are there. One is aldehyde, one is ketone. The highest priority for aldehyde. If aldehyde is there, ketone is there. The highest priority for which one? Aldehyde. So this is number one, number two, number three, four and five. So dear all, third position, there is a ketone. Very good, dear all. Prati is very good. It's a correct answer. Third position, third position, uh, order of boiling point including all organic char okay okay joel i will give it okay oh so let me tell just tell you dear all the boiling point order please remember all of you M mostly they will ask you any one of this okay most uh, one is carboxylic acid having highest boiling point then alcohol then aldehyde then uh, ether then hydrocarbon then hydrocarbon they will ask you any one or two among this one acid having highest boiling point then alcohol then aldehyde then ether hydrocarbon Joel, this is the order okay and uh, tell me dear all tell me dear all what is the answer for that third position there is a ketone so the name is three oxo you know ketone if it coming as a main group we will use on if it is a minor group we use oxo so three oxo and five carbon with the aldehyde what we can call pendanol three oxo pendanol three oxo pendanol okay now i think because of uh, the typing issue you have maybe you are missing the hyphen and comma no issue no issue but during exam hyphen comma everything should be proper dear all because certain rules are there tell me dear all what is the name of the cyclic compound dear all you know absolutely which is number one here number one is one two and three third position there is a methyl group so we can say able to say three methyl three methyl come on all of you what is that very good. 3 methyl cyclopendanone. Right? Cyclopendanone. 3 methyl cyclopendanone. Yes, correct one. What about the last one, dear all? What about the last one? It is an aldehyde. Sorry, it's a ketone. It's a ketone. Where you are going to number? This is dear all. 1, 2, 3. That is the parent chain. Where first position there is a phenyl ring. First position there is a phenyl ring. So, what is the name, dear all? 1 phenyl. 1 phenyl, total 3 carbon, right? P propanon, propanon. Its first position is the ketone. 1 phenyl, propanon. Yes, 1 phenyl, propanon. Good. So, dear all, nomenclature we can't expect from which organic chapter. Any of the organic chapter, one, or one uh, IUPC nomenclature can be expected. Please practice it, okay? Uh, no, okay, it's okay, fine, fine. Now, they are all reactivity order is a repeated question from aldehyde ketone chapter. You know, the aldehydes are given. Ethanol. What is ethanol? CH3, CHO. Ethanol. What is propanol? The second common. Propanol. CH3, CH2, CHO. Propanol. 
And third one, butanone. What is butanone? CH3CO, CH2CH3 butanone. And what is the last one? Propanone, that is CH3CO, CH3, that is what? Propanone. Dear all, remember all of you, the question which will undergo nucleophilic addition reaction faster. Remember all of you, aldehydes are more reactive than ketone towards nucleophilic addition reaction. The one simplest reason you can able to say in aldehyde, steric hindrance is less. In aldehyde, steric hindrance is less. So, Aldehydes, let me consider this is A, B, C, D and please observe dear all whether they want, whether the CBSC bond want, whether it is a increasing order or decreasing order, that you fix first. Which order they want, arrange the following in the increasing order dear all, keep in mind. So aldehydes are more reactive, right? Why? Because of less steric hindrance. Which one having A, A and B are the aldehyde, among that which one having least steric hindrance? Absolutely A. Because uh, B contain which little bulky group. So A is more reactive than B. Among C and D, both are ketone. Among that, which one having less steric hindrance? That is nothing but D, right? Because only two small groups are there. And here you can able to see two bulky groups are there. It is least reactive. So this is the correct order. Hope you already given one, two, four, three. Yes, correct. Dear all, again I am repeating. Simply don't write this answer, just the answer. Again, I'm reminding you, please write the, please write the, which one? Compound structure also, if they given the name. Okay, so, uh, uh, okay, Arjun, it will take uh, little time, right? Inductive effect is nothing, but just remember, just remember this point, okay? Electron donating groups are plus I groups, plus I effect. Electron withdrawing groups are minus I effect. Okay. Electron donating groups are plus I effect. Electron withdrawing groups are minus I effect. Okay. Right. Now, next one, dear all. Acidity of carboxylic acid. You know the given acids are benzoic acid. What is benzoic acid? Benzene with the COOH. I told you why benzoic acid is more acidic. Because when it loses the hydrogen, it is more stable due to resonance. Right. And next one is what? 3,4-dinitro benzoic acid. Please draw the structure, all of you, to increase the content of the paper. Please increase the content of the paper, dear all. If you are if writing a 70 mark question paper, just 3 or 4 pages, dear all, mark will be lesser. Content should be there. Proper answer should be there. Beautifully, you have to present. Okay. Next one. So, 3, 4, dinitro. 3, 4, 3, 4, dinitro, benzoic acid. What is the last one? 4, methoxy, uh, benzoic acid. Okay. 4, methoxy, benzoic acid. 4, methoxy, for methoxy. What is methoxy? OCH3. Dear all, let me number. This is A, this is B, this is C. This is the way you should answer for the exam, dear all. Dear all, the groups you can able to understand easily. Nitro group, nitro group, electron withdrawing group. And methoxy, alkyl and alkoxy groups are electron donating group, dear all. You know, electron withdrawing group increase the acidity, electron donating group decrease the acidity. So, which is more acidic, dear all? B. And let me just check it whether increasing or decreasing order that is actually a trap. Please remember, increasing order, so B greater than A than C because B contain electron withdrawing group. C contain electron donating group, therefore the order is like this one, C, A, B, yes, that's a correct answer, hope you clear. So, acidity question we can expect here all from, uh, which one, As uh, alcohol chapter and also carboxylic acid chapter, okay. Now, naming reaction. See, a list of naming reactions are there in this chapter, right? So many naming reactions are there. So, how to remember? Don't worry. Let's remember and you, I, I think you already studied the reaction, each and one of them. Immediately, you will get the name. If you get the name, immediately, yes, 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 yes these things. So many things are uh, running through your mind, right? So, I need all those things together. Let's discuss first, dear all. What is Rosenmund reduction? Rosenmund reduction means a acid chloride or acyl chloride when you treat with hydrogen in presence of palladium and barium sulfate what happen HCl eliminate you will get 
RCOH. So dear all, it's a preparation of aldehyde from acid chloride by treating with hydrogen with the palladium and barium sulfate. We studied a reasoning question from this area why we are using barium sulfate in this reaction. Because the product is aldehyde, right? There is a another, why it is called a reduction? Why it is called reduction? Because it is an addition of hydrogen. The product is aldehyde. This aldehyde can undergo further reduction. This aldehyde can undergo further reduction. This can be prevented by the help of barium sulfate, right? It reduces the activity, yes. So barium sulfate is using to prevent the further reduction of aldehyde. What is, dear all, Stephen reaction? Let's go to Stephen reaction. What is Stephen reaction? Yes, I hope you already get the answer. Stephen reaction is cyanide to aldehyde. What dear all? cyanide to aldehyde a cyanide that you can convert it to aldehyde through which one the Stephen reaction what are the step in Stephen reaction dear all first we will add stannous chloride right stannous chloride with HCl secondly we will treat with which one water and heat so dear all cyanide to aldehyde by treating with the stannous chloride is called what Stephen reaction can you tell me one alternative method to convert cyanide to aldehyde one of the real agent we are using can you type in the chat box dear all yeah that already a given no aldehyde ketone carboxylic acid the order mostly they will ask you aldehyde acid alcohol or uh, alcohol ether uh, hydrocarbon like that that order i given already that we have to be focused okay Yes, dear all, which one? Very good, dibal H. Very good, diisobutyl aluminium hydride. Dibal H is the reagent to convert which one? Cyanide to aldehyde. Very good, very good. Now, dear all, Itard reaction. Very important reaction. Itard reaction is a conversion of what? Toluene. Toluene. First, we will treat with what? CrO2Cl2, right? Chromyl chloride, right? With the medium, you know very well. So, first, we will get CH. O C R O H C L two O C R O H C L two. You will get a chromium complex first. This chromium complex on acid hydrolysis, you will get which one? Benzaldehyde. So conversion of toluene to benzaldehyde through treating with the chromyl chloride, what we call the Itard reaction. It's a very important direct question for your exam. Let's go to the fourth one, dear all. Getterman Koch reaction. It's a direct conversion of benzene to which one? Benzaldehyde. Easy to remember. Benzene to benzaldehyde. Benzene to benzaldehyde. Hope you remember the reagents which all we have to use here. Carbon monoxide, right? We are using which one? Carbon monoxide. And with which one? HCl. And which all do you remember, dear all? Anhydrous AlCl3 or what we can use? CuCl. Yes, very good. Very good. When I'm saying the when I'm saying the name of the compound at the moment, at the moment, this reaction you, sh you should uh, get in your mind. Okay. Okay, fine, dear all. Let me go to the next reaction. Clemenson reduction. What is Clemenson reduction, dear all? A aldehyde or ketone. A aldehyde or ketone. Aldehyde or ketone. We when we treated with a zinc amalgam, right? Zinc amalgam along with the what? Zinc amalgam along with the what? Only zinc amalgam? Yes, very good. A zinc amalgam with the HCl, the CO part becomes CH2. It becomes alkane. If you use propanone, you will get propane. If you use uh, propanol, you will get propane. Like that, zinc amalgam. Zinc amalgam, which one? Clemenson reduction, dear all. Let me go to the Wolf Kishner reduction, dear all. What about Wolf Kishner reduction? Okay, let me go to the Wolf Kishner reduction first. What is Wolf Kishner reduction, dear all? Wolf Kishner reduction, sixth one. Okay, a aldehyde or ketone. First, we treated with the word hydrazine. First, we treated with the word hydrazine. Secondly, we treated with the word ethylene glycol, ethylene glycol or KOH and heat. You are getting same hydrocarbon. So, Wolf Kishner, Clemenson, same purpose, but steps are different, you know, very well.
what is the next one dear all the next one is given as the seventh one you know aldol condensation you know first uh, aldol condensation what is the important condition dear all that reacting aldehyde or ketone should contain at least one alpha hydrogen and it is happening presence of dilute base you know there is a doubling number of carbon first you will get aldol once you heat aldol it undergo condensation you will get alkene very good next one cross aldol condensation is the same condition but here the reacting species are two different species right and what is Kanizaro reaction during Kanizaro reaction the aldehyde should not contain alpha hydrogen and it is happening in presence of what concentrated base you know you will get a alcohol and sodium salt of acid what is the uh, HBZ reaction dear all 10th one HBZ reaction in HBZ reaction let me consider one carboxylic acid which contain alpha hydrogen when this is treated with a, a halogen for example let me add bromine in presence of red phosphorus secondly we are treating with the water what happened here all this bromine this bromine come to the place of this hydrogen means it's remove one alpha hydrogen you will get r c h b r c o o h this is called what h v z reaction so dear all h v z reaction is from acid remaining all reaction from our aldehydes and ketone part they are all very important reactions like Ettard, Gutterman, uh, Wolf Kishner, Clemenson. These all are repeated question direct. So sometimes we need to use for conversion questions. Okay. Next one, dear all, what are the distinguishing tests? Even though you know this chapter it contain more distinguishing tests also. What are the distinguishing tests, dear all? 2,4 DNP tests. Dear all, 2,4 DNP test is given by. 2,4 test is given by which what is 2,4 DNP? 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine. This test is given by which one dear all? Aldehydes and ketones. 2,4 DNP test is given by yes aldehydes and ketone. Please uh, careful about my question okay. How will you distinguish between uh, ethanol and ethanoic acid? Ethanol and ethanoic acid. One is aldehyde, one is acid. So aldehyde will give this test. Yes, okay. What is Tollens test? You know, Tollens test is also called silver mirror test. You may do in the laboratory also. You know, Tollens reagent, what it is? Ammoniacal silver nitrate. AG NH3 twice, all plus. Their reactions also, study all of you. And Tollens test is given by which one? All aldehydes, right? Tollens test is given generally given by all aldehydes. So, they are asking you, how will you convert propanol and propanone? Propanol. One is aldehyde, so he can give tolerance test. Ketone do not respond this test. Yes. And failing test. They are all failing solution to other. Hope you know. Failing solution to other. So immediately we should get failing solution A and failing solution B. Tell me, dear all, what is the color of failing solution A? Oh, those who are all, those who are listening the class, you can able to say very fast. What is the color of failing solution A? Failing solution A, what is the color? Very good, they are all blue in color. Blue in color because it's copper sulfate 5H2O, hydrated copper sulfate is called filling solution A. What is the color of filling solution B? What is the filling solution B color? It is colorless, colorless, you know, it's sodium potassium tartrate. Very good, all of you, very good. Sodium potassium tartrate is called filling solution B. Overall, it is what? CuO, it becomes Cu2O, right? Cuprous oxide, it becomes cuprous oxide, right? So, dear all, filling test is given by all aliphatic aldehydes. All aliphatic aldehydes can give this test. Yes? So, dear all, how will you distinguish between uh, ethanol and uh, benzo, uh, benzaldehyde? Ethanol, ethanol, benzaldehyde. Ethanol is aliphatic, benzaldehyde aromatic. So, who will give this one? Uh, aliphatic normally give this test. And iodoform test. Hope you remember, we have already studied iodoform test in alcohol that contain CS3, CHOH group. Even ketone and aldehyde also can give iodoform test. The condition, they should contain CH3. CO group. They all they should contain CH3 CO group. If this group is there, it will give the yellow colored iodoform. And what about sodium bicarbonate? As what is sodium bicarbonate? NaHCO3. Sodium bicarbonate. You know, when a carboxylic acid treated with a sodium bicarbonate, you will get brisk effervescence of which one? Carbon dioxide. So this test is given by what? Carboxylic all carboxylic acid. Among that, one exception case. Tell me, tell you, dear all. How will you distinguish between? methanoic acid and uh, ethanoic acid tell me dear all what is the answer 
How will you distinguish between methanoic acid and ethanoic acid? Come on all of you, which answer, which distinguishing test? Ah, yes, yes, that's what I'm discussing now. Yes, Fadi. Methanoic acid and ethanoic acid, how can you distinguish? Dear all, mm, we can use, no, 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 no. <sighs> Not iodoform test, not iodoform test, dear all. Not iodoform test. Methanoic acid and ethanoic acid, we are distinguished through, dear all, Tollens test. We are using, we are using Tollens test. Why, 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 why? Dear all, Tollens test, normally, you know, it is given by aldehydes, right? Yes, aldehyde. You can able to see, in methanoic acid, there is a aldehydic hydrogen. Can you see there is a CHO group in met uh, methanoic acid? So, dear all, methanoic acid and uh, any other acid, if they are giving you, we can use Tollens test. Because Tollens test is given by which one? Aldehydes, right? Aldehydes were that uh, HCO, that uh, there is a aldehydic hydrogen in uh, methanoic acid. So, it will give Tollens test. Okay? Yeah. Dear all, have you noticed that point? Have you noticed this point, all of you? Okay. No, no. Sodium bicarbonate test we can't use it because sodium bicarbonate test is given by all acids. So both of them give the uh, rea uh, re uh, the reaction. One should give, one should not. Then only we can distinguish, right? So this is one exception case. All of you, please remember. Next one. Chapter dear all amines. The amines chapter dear all and in between uh, I forget to tell you one thing dear all from our first chapter haloalkanes and haloarene there is a topic called the polyhalogen compounds right polyhalogen compound in polyhalogen compound please study all of you DDT what is DDT dichloro diphenyl tetra that uh, uh, name uh, the preparation you should study ddt c then the, which one cfc chlorofluorocarbon and uh, which one iodoform chi3 and chloroform which one chcl3 you know there is a chloroform related question why chloroform kept in a dark bottle wax lined bottle because it is highly reactive towards which one oxygen it will give you what phosgene right co what is phosgene formula, dear all? What is the poisonous gas phosgene formula? Which one? Phosgene formula. What is phosgene formula? Na. Ah. COCl2 right phosgene formula COCl2 that is a expected question they are all DDT you know pesticide that uh, antiseptic that all please study their preparation at least one um, their uh, uh, use that we should remember it's a polyhalogen compound please study this one okay don't forget this one from our chapter amines dear all IUPAC nomenclature most expected question from I amine mean, is basicity related question and reasoning questions are many order of solubility and boiling point we can discuss named reaction and distinguishing test these are the main area you have to be focused in this part okay let us discuss dear all uh, okay Fadi let me just uh, tell you all of you those who get this question please tell me what is the IUPAC nomenclature all of you go to question number one I'm just expanding this is CH CH3 CH3 and then NH2 second question uh, N with CH3 then CH2 CH3 and one more CH2 CH3 and the last one there is a phenyl ring Phenyl ring with NH and CH3. Tell me, dear all, what is the IUPAC name of these compounds? One by one, one by one. Uh, Fadi, because there is a aldehydic hydrogen in methanoic acid. Aldehydic hydrogen is there. That hydrogen is the responsible to give the Tollens test not the resonance so what is the name of the first compound dear all parent chain parent chain which is the parent chain the longest chain this is the parent chain where amine is in the second position so what we can say dear all uh, propan to amine or we can say to propanamine 
Is or no? Yes, propane to amine or propanamine because that is a parent chain. That's a parent chain, dear all. That's a parent chain. Careful, careful. In the second compound, which one is the parent chain, dear all? Left side ethyl, down ethyl, right methyl. Yes, any any ethyl you can take it as the parent chain, right? Let me take this is the parent chain. If it is the parent chain, this is a branch. What is the name of the branch? Methyl. This is a branch. What is the name of the branch? Ethyl. Ethyl and methyl, if it comes alphabetical order, you know, ethyl first. So what is the name, dear all? Already some of them given the answer. N-ethyl, N-methyl, ethanamine, right? Ethanamine. N-ethyl, N-methyl, ethanamine, that's the name. How many of you have given the correct answer? N ethyl separately we should write okay separate that N the term should be there see if the ethyl group is on second position you will write two ethyl right same way there is N ethyl hyphen N methyl then ethanamine proper name okay proper name dear all what is the IUPAC name of the last one come on what is the IUPAC name of the last one What is the IUPAC name of the last one? Where there is a N which carry a phenyl ring and with a methyl group. Very good dear all. Where N which having a methyl and it is on aniline. It's called what? N methyl aniline. N methyl aniline. Very good. Very good. Dear all. Amine nomenclature, please practice it. It's already there in the beginning part of the amine chapter in the NCRT textbook. There is a table which given all the amines and their uh, correct IUPAC nomenclature. Okay, please practice it all of you. Basicity of amine, dear all. Let me tell you the complete clarification regarding basicity. Those who studied, bless refresh it. Just those who don't know, please remember carefully. Dear all, basicity questions. Generally, amines are Lewis base. Amines are amines are Lewis base. Someone asked me what is Lewis base like that. Clear all amines are Lewis base. For example, if you consider R N H2 nitrogen carry lone pair, lone pair donor species we call Lewis base. So amines are generally Lewis base because they can donate the lone pair. How it is easy? If it is easy to donate the lone pair, it is more basic. Clear all. First, whenever you get a question, first you have to categorize them as this order. They're all aliphatic amines are more basic than ammonia. Ammonia is more basic than aromatic amines. So, for example, they're all, for example, methanamine, methanamine, then ammonia, and then aniline, and then aniline. Okay, dear all, why methanamine is more basic? Why methanamine is more basic? Because it contains a plus i group. Plus i group means electron donating group. If it is an electron donating, they will give more electrons towards nitrogen and it is richer in electron. He can easily donate lone pair. Whereas ammonia also can donate lone pair, but there is no donating group. So, which group increase the basic character, dear all? Electron donating group increase the basic character. Whereas aniline, if you consider the lone pair of lone pair is not available for donation because it is involved in resonance. It's a reasoning question. Why aniline is less basic than other aliphatic amine? Because in aniline, the lone pair involved in resonance. Okay. So this is the first order, dear all. Aliphatic amines are more basic than ammonia, than aromatic amines. Now, dear all. Uh, next one you know in gaseous state in gaseous state in gaseous state the order of basicity is prime uh, the uh, in gaseous state uh, the we are considering which one only plus i effect okay only plus i effect therefore the order is tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary more donating group if there more basic character so that is the only one we are considering gaseous state so in gaseous state we are considering only which effect they are on plus i effect donating power whereas in aqua state if 
if methyl is the group present if methyl is the group present then please take the order dear all secondary greater than primary greater than tertiary if ethyl is the group given then the order is secondary among that tertiary then primary because here we are dealing in which state aqua state in aqua state uh, we are considering dear all total three factor plus i effect solvation effect and which one steric factor because of all these three factor the order is coming like this one so please remember all this order yes all are given correct answer uh, if they not mention the uh, state uh, that depends on the question if they not mention the state uh, then mostly we can go with which one gaseous state mostly they will specify the state okay let's see some of the question to avoid the confusion we can do it so dear all question number one Question number one, let me just uh, rewrite the compounds one by one, okay? Uh, first compound is given ethanamine and this is a uh, two ethyl and it is a primary amine, it is a secondary amine, it is a tertiary amine. And arrange the following in the increasing order of their basic character. Dear all, among these three compounds, this is primary, this is secondary, this is tertiary that we already identified. And the group is which one? The, uh, the group is ethyl group. Here, yes, dear all. Faisal, if they not mention in this case, in this case they not mention the state whether it is gaseous or aqueous. In such cases, we can go with which one the gaseous state we can able to uh, follow it. If they not mention, if they not mention, that's actually they have, they should be mentioned in the reaction. If it is not mentioned, suppose it is a gaseous state. Mostly we have to go with the gaseous state. In gaseous state, which order we can able to follow? That is a second question. One minute, all of you. In the second question, the same thing is given. This is tertiary. This is uh, uh, this is primary. One minute, all of you. This is primary, and this is what. Uh, secondary this is what secondary that's also given in ethyl form so dear all mostly they will specify the state in the question okay so this is what I taken in aqua state this is what first one I'm taking in aqua state second one in gaseous state let me go to the gaseous state first of all in gaseous state what is the order dear all tertiary secondary primary is the order so which one among this among this a b c which is secondary c then which is uh sorry 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 if it is in gaseous state tertiary more right so which one the first one then secondary third one then which one second one so if they will mention okay mostly they will specify the state in one if it is gaseous state you should go with tertiary greater uh, then secondary then primary among this one which is tertiary a then uh, b then c then which one b now come to first question in aqua state where ethyl is the group given right in aqua state ethyl among that secondary is more which is secondary the second one b is more than uh, tertiary which is tertiary c then which is primary a so dear all this is the main order please you should study so let me avoid the confusion dear all whenever they given the question whenever uh, in aqua solution ah, okay 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 sorry sorry yeah already mentioned aqua solution right okay first one only yeah okay that's why i said they will mention the state in the uh, question first question please take in aqua state second question they already mentioned in gaseous state so let me conclude all of you finally yes 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 i didn't notice that thank you all of you thank you all of you so that means you are listening so dear all let me conclude generally amines are lewis bases because they have an ability to donate lone pair if it is easy to donate lone pair it is more basic if it is less ready it is less basic electron donating group increase the basic character electron withdrawing group decrease the basic character normally in gaseous state so sorry before going to that aliphatic amines are more basic than ammonia then aromatic i mean this is a general basic character if it is a alkyl group in gaseous state the order is tertiary secondary primary if methyl and ethyl given in aqua state please go to secondary primary tertiary for methyl secondary tertiary primary for which one this one yes yes absolutely pkb kb also very important let me tell you that also that i want to discuss dear all dear all please notice all of you for every base we will say two values one is kb value one is pkb value 
Similarly, for an acid, we will say Ka value and pKa value. You know very well, Kb value directly proportional to basicity. As Kb value increases, basicity increases. Whereas pKb value is inversely proportional to the basicity. Remember all of you, careful. Okay, higher the base uh, Kb, higher basic. Higher the pKb, less basic. Clear all of you? Please remember that point also. Next one, dear all, order of solubility and boiling point. Dear all, boiling point and solubility order from amine topic is same. It is primary greater than, secondary greater than, tertiary. Why primary amines having high boiling point and high solubility? Because primary amine have high ability to form hydrogen bond. High ability to form hydrogen bond. So primary amines are more uh, boiling point and more soluble. So dear all, this is what? This is C2H5 twice NH. This is secondary amine. This is primary amine. This is what? Uh, this is what dear all? This is the uh, aniline. Okay. This is aniline dear all. Aniline. Aniline. Let me consider this is A. This is B. And this is C. Tell me dear all, which is more soluble? Which is more decreasing order of solubility? Okay. Which is more soluble among this A, B, C? Come on all of you. Only, only few minutes left dear all. Let's discuss some questions also. Come on fast all of you. Among A, B, C, which is, which is, which is, which is more uh, soluble? Which is more soluble? B, right? B, because it's primary. Decreasing order, okay? Careful, decreasing order they're asking. Then A, then C. They're all aromatic amines are least base, uh, least uh, soluble in water because it contains a hydrophobic benzene. They're all benzene is hydrophobic, water heating part, so it won't soluble in water. Keep in mind all of you, aniline, uh, aromatic amines are less soluble, okay? Next one, they're all, this is what, this is what, <coughs> tertiary, this is what, it is an alcohol, it is an alcohol, this is a tertiary amine it's an alcohol it's a primary amine dear all which one having highest uh, boiling point tell me dear all alcohols or amine having high boiling point alcohols or amine having high boiling point alcohol or amine alcohol or amine alcohol alcohol yes so let me consider this is a this is b this is c so b having high boiling point among primary and tertiary we know primary having high boiling point c then a a c b is the correct answer is already given yes a c b okay a c b a c b a c b because uh, a having least because it's a tertiary one clear all okay Next one, named reactions, you know, Gabriel thalamide synthesis. You know, Gabriel thalamide synthesis is what, dear all? It is starting with the thalamide, right? This is what thalamide. This is what thalamide. First, thalamide will treat with what? Alcoholic KOH. This uh, H is replaced by what? Potassium. Right? H is replaced by what? Potassium. Then we treated with haloalkane. This potassium replaced by alkyl group. Finally, we treat with NaOH. What you will get, dear all? Primary amine we can prepare. Dear all, Gabriel thalamide synthesis. It is a preparation of what? Primary amine from thalamide. What is Hoffman bromamide? The most sure question from amine chapter. Hoffman bromamide. Maybe direct question or in the conversion part. Hoffman bromamide. Bromamide. So what is amide, dear? all rconh2 what is bromine br2 you know reaction is happening in presence of a, 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 a that a naoh or koh on heat what happened the co part from the amide please remove what is left here all rnh2 a primary amine you know the byproducts which all naoh na2co3 and water so what is hoffman reaction property here all it's a preparation of amine primary amine from where amide one carbon less if you are using if you are using propanamide as starting can you tell me the name of the amine going to form suppose propanamide, propanamide is the starting reagent what is the amine going to form here what is the amine going to form here dear all which one absolutely which one dear all ethanamine right ethanamine one carbon less in the product and dear all carbilamine test so so important Carbilamine test. You know, carbilamine test means what, dear all? Aldehyde. You know, carbilamine test is given by only primary aliphatic or aromatic aldehyde. This aldehyde we treated with the word chloroform and KOH on heating. What happened, dear all? 
the sorry sorry amine is the starting rnh2 we are all sorry for that amine is the starting when amine treated with the chloroform and koh what happened amine becomes isocyanide amine become isocyanide you will get a foul smell right you will get a bad smell that is because of the formation of what isocyanide along with the what kcl and water okay you know carbilamine is a distinction test also right yes so dear all let me go for the distinction test what are the distinction tests dear all hinsberger test what is hinsberger reagent benzene sulfonyl chloride benzene sulfonyl chloride that is called what hinsberger reagent what is observation all of you primary amine react with the hinsberger reagent you will get a precipitate it is soluble in alkali Secondary amine also react with the Hinsberg reagent. It will give you a product. It is insoluble in alkali because it do not contain acidic hydrogen. Tertiary amine do not react with the Hinsberg reagent. We are all carbilamine test is given by only aliphatic and aromatic primary amines. Aliphatic and aromatic primary amines will give this test. Yes, that foul smell. Nitrous acid test, dear all. What is nitrous acid, dear all? HNO2, right? Nitrous acid. Nitrous acid test is a test for aliphatic and aromatic amines to separate. Dear all, let me consider one aliphatic. Uh, this is an aliphatic amine. This is aniline, is an aromatic amine, right? Aromatic amine. When we treated, when we treated aliphatic amine and aromatic amine with nitrous acid, with nitrous acid, dear all, what happened? NH2 group becomes N2 plus Cl minus. NH2 group become N2 plus Cl minus, diazonium salt, which is stable, dear all. This is stable. This is stable due to resonance. This is stable due to resonance, right? And dear all, this is highly unstable so immediately it react with the water and give you alcohol so aliphatic diazonium salts or aliphatic amine react with the nitrous acid it will give you unstable product and it is treating with the water it will immediately react with the water and give you alcohol whereas aromatic amine when treated with the nitrous acid it will give you a stable compound it won't give you alcohol immediately okay so that is a nitrous acid test is a distinguish between for example, ethanamine and aniline. Ethanamine and aniline. How can you distinguish? We can. Ethanamine is uh, aliphatic and aniline is aromatic. So we can use nitrous acid test. So dear all, these are the main three distinction tests in the chapter amines. And dear all, let me tell you some more data. Uh, from anil, uh, the uh, amine chapter, uh, other than this, you can expect question. You know, diazonium salt, many important conversions are there, right? Diazonium salt, when you treat it with which one? Uh, CuCl Cu with HCl, you will get chlorobenzene. CuBr with HBr, you will get bromobenzene. That is called Sandmeyer reaction. Please listen, all of you. When you treat a diazonium salt with a copper powder with a uh, H HCl or HBr, you can prepare chlorobenzene and bromobenzene. That is called Gutterman reaction. When you treat it, tell me, dear all, how will you convert benzene diazonium chloride to iodobenzene? What is the reagent we are using to convert benzene diazonium chloride to iodobenzene? To iodobenzene. <laughs> Yes, KIN warm, potassium iodide and warm condition. How, how can you bring fluorine, dear all? Treating with HBF4, fluoroboric acid, HBF4, fluoroboric acid. How will you bring uh, alcohol? How will you bring alcohol, dear all? Warm water. How will you bring a uh, benzene? I think uh, I think better to discuss with uh, some questions, right? Okay, questions are ready. Questions are ready. And one more thing, dear all, please don't uh, forget to study the coupling reaction also. Coupling reaction, you know, benzene diazonium treated with uh, phenol the color you know the orange red that uh, 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 dye formation will happen when uh, benzene diazonium chloride treated with the aniline please remember the orange color orange yellow orange red and uh, yellow color that dye formation reactions are so important dear all because last year it's a deleted portion so dear all many reactions uh, Ah, yeah, azadide test. That's that's also that's what I said. It's also important. That is the diazonium salt with the phenol, diazonium salt with the aniline, that reproduct and the uh, color also important. Now, dear all, almost uh, within uh, two hours is not completed yet. Anyway, anyway, we studied a 
uh, fast revision of all this chapter which including the IUPAC nomenclature distinction test uh, naming reactions and their special properties and reasoning type of question now I want to know that or we want to be fixed or we want to be more focused on the reagent purpose if they are given a reagent what is the duty on that reaction that we are going to check so dear all now time is 921 I will give you the questions you would write the answer please don't need to write the question please write the answer in the paper means in your notebook very fast that I want to know whether or you have to check yourself whether I studied the reactions or not okay now we are going to study the conversion questions or completing the reaction type of questions are you ready dear all are you ready I will give you some questions I will project some questions in the last previous year what they were asked from each organic chapter all organic chapter okay you should uh, get the answer so fast once so what is the purpose of the reagent on that reaction means completing the reaction and conversion question it will be helpful so dear all let me start question number one question number one I will give you one minute I will give you if not one minute is not uh, not uh, possible because you know time is very restricted I'll give you a few uh, second write the answer so fast write the answer so fast all try to understand uh, try to understand what is the reaction or what is the product uh, going to uh, form in this one all of you write down what is the product what is the major product in the reaction <coughs> fadi careful careful the second one is not propane to all that's butane to all right yeah yes okay hope you completed that's enough to get the answer dear all first one propane reacting with the b2h6 you know diborane when then h2o2 this reaction is called hydroboration oxidation propane converted to what propanol yes or no propane converted to what dear all propanol reaction hydroboration and then oxidation yes propanol is the answer next one dear all next one uh, next one is given which one dear all uh, that is 2 bromo butane is given with aqueous KOH remember all of you whether they're giving aqueous or alcoholic you know aqueous KOH mean nucleophilic substitution BR remove it is replaced by OH you will get CH3 CH2 CH OH and then CH3 butane 2 all is the product yes correct this is a halo arene with magnesium and dry ether you will get the Grignard reagent which one they're all phenyl magnesium bromide right phenyl magnesium bromide will get it they're all did you get the answer correct or, correct or not did you get the answer correct or not all the three answers are correct right all the three answers are correct right okay right let's go to the next question those who made the mistake please try to understand what's the reaction okay now dear all tell me or write the answer so fast write the answer so fast dear all come on all of you come on all of you come on all of you write the product only the product okay only the product and dear all even though when they ask this type of question for your board exam please try to rewrite the entire reaction not simply the answer okay so dear all first question is from most of the questions are from halo alkane chapter bromination with the heat you know bromination with the heat or light is which one that a substitution reaction substitution happen on most stable uh, free radical side you know where the bromine going to attack dear all the bromine bromine going to attack on this carbon because that is the benzylic position right benzyl so that position is most uh, important so it will give you the product as uh, nothing happened to chlorine it will give you ch br ch3 dear all what is the reason dear all you know actually substitution reaction follow free radical mechanism that benzylic position is the most stable free radical so the bromine goes to attack on that carbon and this reaction second reaction you can able to understand it's nothing but our uh, marconicos rule in marconicos rule dear all this is the carbons 
and negative part of the addendum negative part of the addendum goes to carbon with less number of hydrogen and positive part goes to carbon with more number of hydrogen you will get the product as you will get cyclohexane with uh, ch3 on the ch3 carbon the bromine also attack hope you get the same answer dear all mark on rule yes one bromo one methyl cyclo cyclohexane yes and you're all in this reaction careful all of you this is an alcohol you're treating with the uh, hcl we need to remove water right so h plus is ready which oh minus you are going to take it this oh minus or this oh minus they're all please take this oh minus because if you remove the oh minus you're getting benzyl carbocation that is most stable so please remove this oh and uh, this h so you will get the compound as which one uh, that uh, benzene and here oh here you will get what ch2 cl yes yes cl with the aliphatic position what is the other reaction dear all a halo alkane with a sodium and dry ether that's called what woods reaction right woods reaction woods reaction can you tell me dear all what is the name of the product in the uh, the fourth reaction in the woods reaction what is the name of the product what is the name of the product in this woods reaction what is the name of the product Uh, two three dimethyl uh, hexane ah butane two four dimet two three right two three dimethyl butane is the answer dear all why dear all because the first compound please write like this one the first compound i can draw uh, like this this is two chloropropane you know we will take one more same compound right one more same compound and in middle what we are using sodium right we will use two sodium what happened the two sodium remove the two chlorine this isopropyl combined with this isopropyl what you will get here all ch3 ch ch3 then ch ch3 then ch3 you will get two three dimethyl butane yes good and what is the last one dear all what uh, happen when a halo alkane treated with a uh, agcn you know when you treat a halo alkane with a kcn you will get cyanide with the agcn you will get isocyanide remember all of you the product is what ch3 ch2 nc ch3 ch2 nc yes Remember KNO2 and AgNO2 also. KNO2 will give you ONO nitrite. AgNO2 will give you NO2 nitro. Remember all of you carefully. Next one dear all. Complete. Complete the reaction. Come on fast. Complete the reaction all of you. Complete the entire reaction. You have to fill this uh, blanks. You can able to see A, B, A, B, A, B. Fill this uh, product site. Faster, okay, faster. Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Yeah. Five minutes left. Maximum we can discuss, dear all. This is a clubbed questions. Uh, most of the questions are from Amin chapter. Dear all, this is a carboxylic acid. This is carboxylic acid. When we heat with ammonia, it will give you what, dear all? Amide. Right? Amide. There is two carbon in the acid. It will give you uh, ethanoic acid. Will give you ethanamide. And what is NaOBr? NaOBr is what dear all? That is the mix of what NaOH and Br2. Dear all, it's an amide. It's an amide and it's treating with what bromine and NaOH. What is the reaction? Hoffman bromamide degradation reaction. What happened? Remove the CO group. You will get the compound as CH3, NH2, methanamine as the product. Yes, yes, Hoffman reaction. What about the second case? In the second case, it's called nitrobenzene, nitrobenzene with Fe with HCl. Let me tell you some more reagents to convert the same reaction. Fe with HCl or we can use tin with HCl or we can use hydrogen with the palladium. All are converting the nitro group into which one they are all amine group. You will get aniline. 
aniline on diazotization aniline on diazotization what you will get dear all you will get diazonium salt n2 plus cl minus Yes, you know, this is the reaction. What about the last case? This is our benzene diazonium chloride. When you treat it with the CuCN, you will get cyanobenzene, right? When cyanide on acid hydrolysis, what happened? Tell me, dear all. When cyanide on acid hydrolysis, if it undergo partial hydrolysis, it will give you amide. Fully hydrolysis, it will give you acid. Here they are not mentioned partial, so we can go with a complete hydrolysis, dear all. So it will give you what? Benzoic acid. Okay? Cyanide become what? Benzoic acid. Yes. So conversions are clear now. I will give you some more question, all of you. Few minutes left. All of you try to answer so faster. Tell me, dear all, what is the answer for these questions? Come on. Write it fast. Uh, let me discuss together, dear all. This is cyanide, uh, cyanide on reduction. What happened? Cyanide on reduction, it will give you, it will give you what? Amine. Don't change the number of carbon, dear all. It will give you what? Amine. Okay, cyanide on reduction, it will give you amine. No change in carbon. What is this reaction, dear all? You can able to see there is a diazonium part with H3PO2 or if we are using ethanol also, please remember. If you are using diazonium salt with H3PO2 or ethanol, what happened? The diazonium part become benzene. So benzene with CH3 and then Br. So what is the purpose of H3PO2 and ethanol? Dear all, it is to convert diazonium salt into benzene. And what about the next one? In this case, what is this? Benzene sulfonyl chloride. That is our Hinsberg reagent. Hinsberg reagent, when you treat with the secondary amine, it undergo reaction. What happened here all? This H, this Cl eliminate, it will give you the product as benzene with SO2, SO2 with the nitrogen and that CH3 twice. Just remove that HCl part, okay? And what about this case, dear all? In this case, diazonium salt is given with the ethanol that I already given here. When diazonium salt when treated with the ethanol, it become benzene. It become benzene. What about this case, dear all? It is an amide. Amide when treated with the bromine and NaOH, it undergo Hoffman bromamide degradation reaction. It will give you what? A amine. Which amine? Aniline. They are all aniline on acetylation. What is this compound? CH3, CO, O, CO, CH3. What is this acetic anhydride? What happened here all? Just remove this one, okay? This H and the CH3, COO that you remove. So what actually you removing? CH3, CO, O, H. If you remove, what is left? Just clap. Benzene with NH. Then what is the remaining part? CO, CH3. You will get amide. You know this reaction is called acet that, uh, acetylation. Right? So amine on acetylation, you will get what? Amide. They're all. Let me give you a last set of reaction. Go fast and complete it. This is the last question, dear all. Please complete it fast. What is this compound? This is amide. When Hoffman reaction, what you will get? Amine. That's what? Aniline. Aniline on diazotization, what happened here all? It becomes diazonium salt and it's on treated with the Ki. What do you will get here all? Iodobenzene. Hope you get the answer first. What about the last case? When you treat methyl chloride with the KCN, you will get methyl cyanide. Cyanide on reduction with the lithium aluminum hydride, you will get which one? The amine. No change in carbon, okay? Amine on treated with the chloroform and alcoholic KOH, it undergo which one carbylamine reaction, it will give you what the full smell isocyanate. You will get isocyanate. Dear all, all the answers are correct or not? All the answers are correct or not? Is it correct or not? Did you get the answer or can you able to recover all these reactions? Byproduct is not important. Okay, byproduct in the conversion questions or in the completing the reaction question, that byproduct is not important. If you know it, just write it. But it's not necessary. Okay, no need to write the byproducts to make confusion. Just write the main products. So, dear all, now.
Time is 9.32. It's actually sharp. Two hours. We just completed all the all four organic chapter. Uh, alcohol, alkenes and haloarene, alcohol, phenols and ethers, carboxylic acid, aldehyde, ketones and amines. Hope the entire reaction or you can within this two hour, I'm not wasting your time. So within this two hour, I hope you completed or you can able to recover all these reactions. Now you have three more days. Please practice the entire reactions, conversions and all. Whatever the doubts you have, please ask to us and clear the entire doubts. Wish you all the very best. And tomorrow, day after tomorrow, physical chemistry and inorganic chemistry remaining six more chapters are there. So please prepare well all of you. Wish you all the very best. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Morning class, ah, okay. Tomorrow, dear all, uh, morning class will be there in our center. So, those who have doubts, you can come to our center and clear the doubts. So, from morning to evening, I'll be there in our brilliant center. So, wish you all the very best, dear all. Wish you all the very best, and God bless you, dear all. Thank you. Brilliant Katha, your trusted coaching partner for IIT, JE, NEET, Science and Commerce tuitions with 10 years of excellence in quality training. Brilliant Qatar.